Daruma is believed to be the first film starring two disabled leads, Tobias Forrest and John W. Lawson, in a story that's not about disability. Daruma is the first film in the history of filmmaking, as far as we can find out, that's ever had both lead actors cast with a disability. So it proves that there is an audience out there for authentically cast films. This is about friendship, fatherhood, family, love, and so much more. You know, we go to movies to feel something. We want to feel something, and Daruma is a movie that will make you feel. Welcome to Meet the Biz. Okay, today I'm very excited because this film is it's amazing. I, I, you know, I was thinking, what can I say about Daruma? And it's a visual feast of storytelling full of heart and life. And we have got the, the producer, the director, the writer, the cinematographer, and the two leads here today. And we're going to first bring on uh, the wonderful director, Alexander Yellen who is the director and cinematographer. Uh, he is a veteran of, of 65 feature films and 90 episodes of television, including uh, sci-fi's uh, series Z Nation. And we also have Kelly McNeil Yellen, and she is the producer and the writer of Daruma, a graduate of the University of Southern California School of Drama and Groundlings Writing Program, and her first feature script um, won the first place at the UCLA Extension Feature Film Screenwriting Contest. So here they are, the beautiful husband and wife. There we go, Alexander. Hey, how are you? Hey. Hey. Good to see you both. And congratulations on this uh, truly exquisite film. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so, much. so much. We are very happy to be here. So um, we wanted to to talk with, you know, you and, and your your network. And we wanted to, you know, just, just kind of share this because this is a really special moment, not just for us, but I think everybody in the community and everybody that's been, you know, rooting for us for the last five years <laughs> as we've done this. Really amazing. Now you started with a short, correct? We started with the proof of concept, actually. So um, I can I can tell you how this all kind of got started. I mean, it's um, so if, in case your audience doesn't know, I think you do know Alex and I are in a, our husband and wife team. So uh, this was one of the very first scripts that I let him read of mine um, when we first started dating. And I was very protective of it because I knew I had a very specific vision of how I wanted to do it. I wanted to authentically cast it. Um, and I knew that I was going to face a lot of insurmountable roadblocks to do it the way I wanted to do it. Now, I, I'm going to insert here. Why did you, when some people don't care about authentically casting, why did you want to? So I think that the majority of people in the community know that, you know, disability is always the last thing on people's minds until it affects them personally. And I had a family member um, endure a, a life-changing in injury. And at the time, there was no support, really. You know, the Reeve Foundation what it, wasn't what it was. There wasn't really social media. There just wasn't, there wasn't anything available as a resource like there is now to kind of cope with this devastating, you know, loss and injury. And the only film at the time, I don't want to name the name, it's a really great film, but it basically said that death was better than living with a disability. And I did not, I did not agree. I, I knew that we could do better. I knew that there could be another way of storytelling because my relative was still the same person. 
they just had an injury, but they were still the same person. So what, you know, it was, it was just boggling, you know, mind boggling to me. So I wrote this script. It is not based on a true story, but I wrote it as a way to process my grief and to tell a different narrative about somebody just existing in life with a disability. And I wanted to have the emotional burdens and, you know, the emotional journey. That was the thing that they needed to overcome, not the, the injury. So, so that's how and why I got involved in doing this. Now, I, I did a draft of that script in 2008. So that will tell you how long we've been working on this. So then years later, I give it to, to Alex. I hear him in the room laughing, like just laughing hysterically. And of course, I'm very nervous about him reading. So I go in and I'm like, what are you laughing at? Like, why, why are you laughing? And he goes, this is hysterical. And I'm like, this is a drama. Like, this is a drama. And he goes, no, this is, this is a dark comedy. And he goes, what are you going to do with this? And I said, I, I don't know. I was like, I don't, I don't know if anybody's going to make this. I was like, I've already given it to my reps who've said, you know, we'll, we'll look at this if you want to cast name actors or something. And I said, I, that's not the way I want to do this. So him, Alex said, I'll direct it. So wow. I was like, are you sure? And he was like, let's figure out a way. So this is how we started off this very long journey together. And this is how we shot the proof of concept in the fall of 2018 and how we came to know our fantastic leads, John and Toby. Um, and I feel like I very much dominated this part of the interview. So I will let someone else take it over from here if anybody else wants to. Well, Alexander, it. what about, I mean, you, you, did you, were you married when she first gave you the script? No, this was, this was, she gave it to me about a year into us dating. Okay. Uh, but it was definitely, I mean, you know, from just from a personal perspective, if you're going to be involved, you know, romantically with another creative, it's really important that you respect their work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because if you're, you don't want to have to lie to them for the rest of your life and say, oh, no, that's really great, honey. That's, that's a really great writer. Uh, so it's, you know, it's a little scary when you open yourself up, uh, you know, and let somebody really see your your creative work and you know i think for 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 both of our benefits that went really well it turns out uh unsurprisingly that kelly's a fantastic writer and that was a really good script and it was like okay you know i already like this person uh and they're talented so i think this is going to go really well both professionally and personally yeah you know i'm i'm what came to my mind are are like uh you know paul newland paul newman and joanne woodward and you know those those teams those married teams that are so amazing together i'll take uh, that comparison yeah um as as kelly said we do have the two main leans here and i'm going to bring them on as well uh the wonderful uh well mr john lawson i mean he's directed beside acting he's directed over 20 films and appeared in 35 films and TV shows. Uh, he's a cer certified scuba instructor uh, and his films Taco Tuesday, Second Date, Gian the Dragon and Whitney's Wedding were all uh, huge award winners. And then we have uh, the other lead actor, Toby Forrest. Uh, Tobias Forrest recently won the Christopher Reeve Acting Award at the prestigious um, Media Access Awards for, for Patrick uh, in Taruma. Uh, and his credits uh, include How to Get Away with Murder, Weeds, The Sessions. Uh, he was featured on the Academy Awards. He is an actor, singer, advocate. Here is John Lawson and Tobias Forrest. Yay! Hey, Hello. Thank you for having yeah. us. Yeah, thank you. First so, of all, yeah. Can I just say uh, kudos to Alex because most people at a one year anniversary are like, here's some flowers and chocolate. He's like, I'll make a, I'll make your movie. <laughs> like it's been a year, or let's make a movie. Listen, I have consistently said Alex is the best man I've ever met. And there's not a day that goes by that I am not so grateful to be married to him. So I, I, I'm sorry. That's also, Wonderful. that's in my diary as well. Oh, are you jealous, Tobes? No, <laughs> I, I don't hate it. Now, I want to know from both of you, your, your, I mean, I want to ask the director and producers and, and writer and cinematographer how you did, how the casting came about this. But I also want to know from John and Toby, 
uh, how you got into these roles. Alex? Uh, first. Uh, well, we, we, when we started the process, we were committed to, to casting authentically, but we really had no idea what was out there. We, you know, didn't have a lot of experience with or exposure to the disability acting, disability filmmaking communities. And we just went the sort of traditional route. We put out, uh, a, you know, a casting notices on all the major services and, uh, you know, we started getting self tape auditions and we went through a, a, a very traditional casting process and, and, you know, there was nothing fancy or complicated about it. It's sort of an industry standard. I'll happily let John and Toby talk about what it was like from their side of it. It's all John's fault. So I'll let him tell. The story. <laughs> well, it, in my 40 plus years of acting or 35 as a double amputee, it was the first time I had ever seen a breakdown for a double amputee. I've seen, you know, a guy missing one arm or just old guy, but never a specific breakdown for a double amputee. So my manager called and said, do you want to do it? And I go, yeah. So Toby and I read together and we do each other, help each other with auditions and uh, do each other's auditions. So I go over to Toby's and I go, hey, will you help me read? And he goes, sure. I say, well, it's just for some stupid little independent film. Nothing will ever come of it. But uh, if you'll, if you'd help me read, you know, it'd be kind of cool. So we're going through and we're reading it a couple of times together. And I said, you should read for the guy in the wheelchair. No, no, it's a paraplegic. They'll want me to do all kinds of things I can't do. I said, doesn't matter, dude. Let them disqualify you. Don't do it yourself. Well, I don't have a part to read. And I go, just read what you read. So we basically turned the camera around. Toby read what he had been reading. John, John, John put the lines on his forehead or something like that. <laughs> you know, we, we did a paper up to the up to the up to the screen. <laughs> but yeah, so he got called in. Uh, he got called in as well to do a callback. And I did. And I think we asked if we could read together. And an important twist in this film is, although if they, they start out as adversaries or not good friends, that in the end, they do become good friends. And mm -hmm. I think the real life friendship that Toby and I've shared over 20 years or whatever it is now, um, that that came through. It's easy to be mad at somebody and pretend like they're mad or acting, but I think the real friendship is what came through for us. And for for me, it was also the fact that it really required the three of them, like, to not convince me, but I, I had a lot of hesitation in the sense that I knew that this was an important project for Kelly and Alex, and I knew it didn't have a huge budget. I knew it didn't have a lot of time. There was a lot of, you know, stuff to it, and also in the script. Here's a character that can do a lot of f physical things that I I couldn't um, or that I thought would take a lot of time and would eat up resources and eat up time and eat up money and and be disappointing. Hmm. You know, I thought my physical limitations as a quadriplegic would be too limiting on what they wanted to achieve because of my experiences before. Being, you know, I, I always had to work my way around physical stuff with going like, you know, I think my character would do this and and not letting the directors know really my physical limitations until I'm there and, and working around it. Right. right. And this was ahead of time. I said, I don't think I don't want to ruin this for you guys, you know, and Alex was so insistent on do we can figure that out. You know, I'm like, I can't get in and out of a car. We, we don't need to see that. We'll figure that out, you know? And Kelly and Alex were so insistent that like, we just need someone that can bring this emotional world to to, to life, right? Mm -hmm. And John and I already have the emotional connection. So that's easy. And the physical stuff, you don't have to green screen John, you're saving money there. <laughs> so, <laughs> I brought my own chair. We didn't have to rent that. Um, so we, you know, too, we might have taken a little <laughs> bit more time on my behalf, but we made up for it with with no, uh, you know, uh, CGI. 
<laughs> I, I'll paraphrase, and it's it's hard even with Kelly and Alex here, but I think the tipping point came when Kelly told Toby, it's not about what you can or can't do. It's about what the character can or can't feel. And that was, a, I think, a big tipping point as well. Uh, I've got to give... I I I've got to give my credit husband for credit for that. Alex told oh. to Toby, I wish I could take credit for that brilliant stroke of directing, but I cannot. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll, you know, I'll give it to Alex then. <laughs> I'm listening to all this conversation and it's making me tear up because this is how directors and producers and creative artists should work and collaborate together. It's it's like, sure, let's work together. And, and by you doing that, Alex, it's 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 amazing. It's 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 uh, the heart chakra is open and the mind chakra. I also feel like it's a, a bit of a lesson because while while most other directors and creators are are trying to take an able bodied person and and present them as a disabled person, you know, with, with less ability in a sense, um, this is an opportunity for me not only to explore all of the emotional range that. Kelly has created in the this amazing character in this story, but also to be presented as, hey, you can take this person who really has a lot of physical limitation and with the art form of 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 of, of uh, film, then you know I'm able to be more able-bodied than I am in real life. Right. And so he's flipping, he flipped the coin in a lot of ways to disprove all of these arguments that people say it'll cost too much money, it costs too much time, all the things that I was putting on myself because society and, and, and the industry had taught me that was disproved very quickly and easily. Well, what I mean, what you're saying is so important. We, we, we as all actors go out and we say, oh, no, I'm not that old or I'm not the character, I'm not this, and we block ourselves from actually possibly getting the job. Uh, so, and, and this is great that, uh, of course, Alex was open. It's like, no, 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 no. Um, what, this is a piece of advice that I'd love to hear from all of you. What would you tell a, an actor or a, a writer or a producer who has a vision and, and everybody else says, no, nah, or you, your mind says, no, but you say to yourself, I'm going to make this because this is what is here. I would I would like to take this one because I've been sitting with this the longest. So this is this has been, you know, ruminating around in my brain for for almost 50, like 15 years now. It's it's wild. And to have it be here and to have the level of people and you know, we're screening at Slam Dance now. I don't like yes. we're never going to get any better than like it's it's amazing. Like look at what we did. And and I think that there is this pervasive myth that goes on in Hollywood, especially in the industry, that if you achieve a certain thing or if you, you know, get to a certain level or if you get if you get all of these accomplishments, that somebody's going to come in and take the wheel and drive the bus for you. And that's just not going to happen. Like, it's just not going to happen. There is never going to be a person that works harder on your script or your project than you. So I would say that if you, if you have a very specific thing that you want to do, if you have a very specific vision, you've got to find a way to do it. And it's taken me 15 years to figure that out and to get to this point. So it takes a long time. One of the best pieces of advice that I've ever heard is that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. <laughs> the, ne the next best time is today. So it's all of these little things that just keep, you know, going into, into this, what I call film soup. Are you guys familiar with the story of stone soup? Yes. So this this is an analogy that I use a lot and I and I will probably write a book on this at some point one day. But the story of Stone Soup, there's a hungry traveler that's going through town and he is turned away by every single villager who who will not, you know, give him the time of day. They won't feed him, they won't take him in. So he's left with nothing and he's cold and he's hungry. So he has a rock. And he he has a little pail. So he, he puts the rock in there and he gets water from the river and he starts boiling this 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 rock in this in this bucket. And people are like, what are you doing? What, what, what are you doing? He's like, well, I'm making a magic soup. 
And they're like, well, well, can I have some? And he's like, well, yes, but if you had some herbs, this would be a much better souk. And eventually more and more people get attracted and like they're interested in it. And by the end, they've got this incredible feast for everyone to share. So I really like to approach all of my projects like like the, with my film soup analogy. So that's that's what we've we've made here. We've made it. We've made a feast for everybody, and it's just it's amazing. So uh, um, let me I, let me also add just because bringing this sort of uh, you addressed the question about acting also, and just thinking about auditions and sort of what you know people are looking for. You know, as an actor, you can you really can't know. You know, you can't you can't be in the head of the casting directors or the directors or the producers to say, here's what they're looking for. So all you can do, and really this is the best advice I can give, is give your the, the version of the performance that resonates most to you. Bring your authentic self, be real, uh, you know, and just, you know, whatever choice you're gonna make, just commit to it and don't try to be, don't try to chase what you think they're looking for because that could end up reading fake and you know, we so uh, with the uh, with Toby's character, you know, it was originally written for someone who's paraplegic, and he stood out so much for his performance that we reconceived the role and did some script rewrites to really accommodate to make him as an actor fit into that role better, make the role fit him. And that's something that if you just tried to pretend to be something else or someone else might, you know, might not have uh, resonated as much with us from the audit, from the performance audition standpoint. So, you know, you never know. Right. Right. Well, it's, it, it's, and it's so um, wonderful. Like you, you said, Kelly, that it's, I mean, it's going to slam dance. And I, I got the email today about the gift bags. <laughs> it was like, you got gift bags. And then I saw dances with films and I was there. I was so blessed to be there at the the Man's Chinese Theater. So it was. I know you're probably seeing somebody. Uh, 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 are you serious? Are, you, are, are we serious you about a, a guest cameo? Hello, hello, <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> oh, he's off. He's off. Yes, I was going to ask about about Barry. How did you get Barry for this film? Oh, how did you get me? <laughs> it, I think it was because of the hundred thousand dollars you paid me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, right. It was most, but we made a budget. We made the movie on a shoestring because we gave Barry the whole budget. Oh, money, Barry! Your camera's off. We can't see you. I didn't know you were going to be on today. This is okay, such wait, a surprise. Wait. That's what Meet the Biz is about. We surprise you. Oh, God. There you are, Mary. Oh, good. There you go. So, uh, yeah, yeah, a hundred thousand dollars. I didn't think it was over the top. <laughs> hey, but you right, paid for... back in. You paid back in ceramic. Oh my God. We appreciate that. Oh well, yeah, you know. <laughs> you know what? My biggest regret from this movie is is that I didn't get a chance to work with you guys enough. Oh. You know? I really didn't. You know, I and I, uh, I, I. How, how long was I actually on this film? Three days, four days. We had you for two days, Barry. Two days of work with a day off in between. Oh, yeah. It, it was you. beyond. It was beyond memorable for me because, like, uh, it, you know, there's there's bucket list moments you don't realize are bucket list moments until you're in them, and and doing a scene with you and uh, like the instant connection and emotion that you're able to provide is is one beautiful and, and a great opportunity but also just to to have the history of you sitting next to me is it was an honor Barry and, oh, and it, it is definitely one of those moments that I will always cherish even just having that moment and I'm that's the beauty of film right there is that it was captured for me, like in my own mind and emotion, but it's on the screen too. And it's a, oh, it's, good. it was so awesome to have you and to have you here today. Well, thank you. You know, I, stroke, I just, I have one, uh, I, just, I just have one thing to say. I, I just recorded that whole thing and I'm sending it to my agent. <laughs> <laughs> good, okay. Tell them all about me. Well, you yeah. Know, I, I wanted to say that in a broad stroke, this film is about found family. And that's mm -hmm. usually what happens in front of the camera. 
and this or this production is about the found family that's behind the camera as well and that's meant a lot to me oh gosh yeah oh, oh that's amazing well yeah. and the connection that you had you know toby i know you were talking about working with barry but the connection that you both had and all of you had all the actors was phenomenal it was just it was so this and that's what makes this film so powerful as well i want to know uh, though barry how did you get involved oh uh, let me uh, i'll answer that <laughs> <laughs> okay you answer it because i've known you for years yeah that's i think that's the secret is is uh the first time that i met barry on a uh sci-fi adaptation of moby dick that yeah. uh was you know he was the it was like a nuclear submarine captain and you know that you know it was sort of it was a b movie but barry really brought his a game every day it was a c movie or c, c. <laughs> and maybe it's backwards c movie oh i get it because because it's on the c yeah yeah yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh good it. yes i Excellent. get it um, <laughs> and i just remember one scene in which you lit the hell out of it it was so good and and, and i fell in love with you just in that one scene alone you didn't save the movie but you know it, <laughs> No, well, and, and you know, I'm not sure you did either, but thank you. You know, there were right, there were I didn't there even was, try. There was Barry, and then there was sort of everybody else. And not to disparage any of the other actors who did great work, but you know, Barry treated this thing like Shakespeare. And you know, and he he you know, he brought an absolutely, you know, a, a genuinely moving performance to something that was sort of written for schlock value. And that always stuck with me. And we ended up working together two more times after that. Uh, but he's, you know, from the very first time, you know, Kelly and I talked about it, we sort of talked about the role as as like a stunt casting role. And on my very, very first list of names, Barry was the first name I wrote down. Uh, well, he because, was always because I did stunts? I, I, was this a stunt <laughs> part? I mean, did I have to like endanger myself in some and way? What was the stunt you did only, on this? Only stunt? emotionally. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Right. It was wonderful. Well, thank you. Keep on going. I, I interject these little sarcasms occasionally because I have nothing brilliant to say. Oh, yes, but they are brilliant. Before you send I, your manager. Can I tell I, you that uh, something that Barry did that surprised all of us on set that was just absolutely astonishing? So this this is this speaks to this man's character as well as his talents. So I didn't know this, but Barry is a potter. So he makes he's a, he he's a, he works with ceramics. And, you know, everybody wants to know the story of, you know, what is a Daruma doll? What does it mean? And it's a Japanese luck doll. And I'm not going to try to say the Japanese phrase that goes along with it, but essentially what ha Oh, you have it. Oh, you have oh. it. That's oh, that's wonderful. Yep. <laughs> So essentially what happens when you get one, you're supposed to make a wish and color in the eye. And then when your wish comes true, you color in the other eye. And the saying that goes along with the Daruma doll is fall down seven times, get up eight. And I could not think of a better tagline for basically what we've all been through trying to get this movie through the hoops and through the ringer. And I think that that really resonated with Barry because he showed up. I picked him up from the airport and he had these suitcases full of these ceramic Daruma dolls that he made. Oh, there's one. For everybody. He he brought, he brought, so, he brought so, and I still have a couple, I still have a couple that we haven't let, uh, passed out. We, we reserved those for VIPs. But it was just a testament to, you know, early on before anybody knew that we were going to be playing in any festivals or anything like this, like you talk about film family and like, this is, this is it. And it has been an astonishing, absolutely astonishing, you know, journey for all of us. So Barry, we all have those and they're, they're actually in a glass China case at our home. Oh, nice. So yeah. do you, if you need more of them, by the way, they're, <laughs> they're $300 each from now on, you know, sort well, of that's like, what I was going to ask, where do yeah. we buy these, Barry? Do you have, a uh, of you your don't, arm? you have, you have to give money to the film, show up, you've got to rent theaters, you've got to do everything. And, and then maybe you'll get one. Um, but not, not, not from me. I'm, I could make a whole bunch more, but it, it's not, it wasn't in my contract. You know, the, <laughs> I got a hundred thousand dollars for like I think I made seventy or eighty of those things, and I would need another hundred thousand dollars just for another ten. 
Yeah, I'm I'm afraid I'm afraid that you know John and Toby have, have, have just eaten up all the other resources. So we'll just have to pin that, put a pin in that. Too. Oh, yeah, no. Oh that's God. where that's where the money belongs. Believe me, that's where the money belongs. Well, I was, you know, you guys. I, I'm going to cut you off again. Uh, I know you want to talk, but no, no, no talk. Uh, I, I think there's two guys on the bottom of the screen here. I mean, they deserve so much credit. I've been listening to some of their interviews uh, over the last month or two, and they're so good at it. They're so brilliant at it. not just what they did in the movie but how they're communicating about the movie to the public and, and opening up eyes and opening up hearts. And, and you guys, uh, God bless you. I think you just are doing a great job. And um, um, okay, you can talk now, go well, ahead. That, that actually means uh, so much because you've, you've reached out to me personally and, and I, it's mind boggling to me. I'm getting a text from Barry Bostwick. <laughs> <laughs> Like congratulating me for my acting and just it's beyond uh, that and and if you ever need minions for your pottery business john and i we're hands-on uh, okay uh well i uh yeah <laughs> i can them, more hook you know i can lips. you know hook them okay. and... but i do feel like this film was a bit of also six degrees of berry in the sense that we also had uh austin basis on the film who had played your son in a right. previous project. And so it was really kind of cool for, for you guys also to run into each other, which was nice. Oh, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Austin basis. Boy, you know, you know, there's something you learn from Austin basis as an actor, you don't ever stop communicating with your peers and, uh, and networking from the time I met him 20 something years ago, he has been, he has, he has communicated so brilliantly with people he knew and, and then pushing forward his career and, and keeping us all attuned to where he was, what he was doing, when it's on the air. And um, it's a, it, was, it was a real lesson uh, to me about how you, how you have to do acting these days and how you have to do your career these days, you know, before... When I was starting out, you just worked and then got drunk. But now it's, you know, it's 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 different. I mean, you actually have to uh, pursue things, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not that great at that part of it, but I'm amazed that Kelly and, and, and John are fantastic at, yeah. um, you know, just getting the word out. Um, I'm great in person. That's well, the I've been times that I know when a woman tells you to do something, you just do it and oh. ask questions. Kelly says, go here, do this, say that. And that's what I do. Yeah. You know, I'm, Kelly I'm, wears many hats. I, you know, you have to as an, an, as an indie production. And I will say that, you know, one of my greatest assets, you know, in this film, I mean, in addition to you know, being the writer and the producer of it is I do have a marketing and a PR background. And, you know, David, you were talking about these gift bags that, you know, we we are giving out. So every single attendee at both the Park City and the Salt Lake City is getting a gift bag. And I'm trying to total up the total retail value of these bags. It is hundreds of dollars. But that to me says something pretty interesting too, because a lot of people are like, oh, there's no money in this type of, you know, film. Like there's, you know, this is, you know, if you authentically cast, it's going to cost you more money. I have 24 brands that say otherwise about the number of products that they have given for these bags. Um, I'll do a post-mortem once we're done with the screening, because I really want to, I want to get there and like, because I've, ha I've had them all shipped up to Salt Lake. Um, but it's, it's, it's been staggering. Plus priceless Barry Bostwick ceramics. Oh, you are, those are not going in the bags. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, no. Hundred thousand dollars didn't go in the bag. <laughs> My God. I, I just want that I yoga mat. I, 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 looked at, I looked at the whole list of stuff and I'll take that yoga mat. Barry, I will get what color, Barry? Do you want the pink one or the blue one? Oh, I'll take uh, I'll take uh, oh, the blue one. Okay, you got it. You got it. I'll take the pink. Okay, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think we, we had it. We had yoga. a. I, I don't understand. I thought it was yogurt. I'm sorry. I. I oh. don't... <laughs> no, we had a we had a yoga company called Chi Universe Yoga, and they donated 200 yoga mats. Wow. So, 
It's an, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. And I, I've got fleeces and hoodies and and like gift certificates for beanies. And we've got, you know, cosmetics. I mean, all of the stuff in a bag. And, you know, the thing is, is that everything shipped to my friend's house in Salt Lake. So I owe my friend like a nice dinner for this, you know, because she's like, she just sent me a video of like her garage. It's, it's, I'm like mortified at like how much stuff is in her garage. But or a ten thousand um, dollar Barry Bostwick ceramic Daruma plate. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I th I will. You know, Amber deserves one for for everything that she's done. She actually deserves one of these, and she, I know she will be so appreciative of it because she's been in the arts for a long time. That's a good idea, honey. Um, see how we work together. <laughs> um, I love like sitting. Uh, this is wonderful. I'm just sitting and taking all you all in. It it's it's that flow of a family, like you said. You're all so connected. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. And well, we look like the Brady Bunch right now. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We do. I don't know. I'm Flo. Here's the story. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, uh, and Alex, what what Barry said earlier too. Your visuals are stunning. I mean that. Uh, I mean you're. Uh, what is it? Um, from high above. I'm blanking. Brown. Aerial. Aerial. Your aerial views and everything. I mean, what do you? constant i guess you're constantly learning and creating and growing with all of all all of your ideas and what you brought to daruma i mean the the lighting the everything it was beautiful well thank thank you very much for saying so i mean my for anybody who doesn't know my background is in cinematography and and the film i met barry on i wasn't the director i was the cinematographer um and that's you know i <clears throat> You know, I've, I've been fortunate in that I work a lot. So that's a lot of practical training, a lot of opportunities to try new things and 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 develop new skills. And uh, it's really only since, I mean, I've done some aerial stuff early in my career and, and some things I probably don't want to tell my parents about. <laughs> but, uh, but it's Hanging only- out of helicopters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't know. want to tell your wife about that either, so. <laughs> You know what? I, it's in the past. I've survived it. It's fine. We have drones now. We don't really need to do those things as much. Uh, but really, it's only in the last three years that I've I've really gotten to play around with drones, and it, it it's totally changed what you can do in terms of uh, creating you know really expansive visuals on a on a small budget. And you know, it's it's uh, we went up to Washington State, Kelly and I, and did uh, you know all this amazing second unit work in these beautiful, you know, these beautiful open spaces. It's just the two of us and we had a camera and a drone and- Our dog you know, in the backseat. A dog in the backseat. Um, but yeah, thank you for saying so. I also did wanna uh, add, when you talk about what people, what the actors in particular uh, bring to the, you know, other things they bring to the table. Um, you know, John and Toby obviously brought a lot of, uh, depth to us in terms of the character and the disability angle and helping us make those roles feel very authentic. Uh, one thing Barry did that I, I, I do want to call out, um, we did a table read on Zoom. This was, you know, definitely during uh, the height of COVID and, and uh, Barry doesn't live in California. I'm, I'm very sad about it or I'd see him more often. Uh, but we did a table read over Zoom and as soon as the table read was over, my phone rings and it's Barry. And he said, that was good. That was really interesting. But I have a question for you. Do you want this to be like, you know, sort of an edgy indie or is this more of a Hallmark kind of thing? And I said, I mean, it's more of an indie. Why do you ask? He said, you know, reading the reading through it all, everybody feels very self-aware and it feels like they're saying everything that they think. And that doesn't feel, that feels a little hallmark. Uh, and, you know, it was, it was, it was a resonant thought. And, you know, I'd always thought, you know, I, I, a lot of those things I find in the edit anyway. Uh, but, you know, that it was a, it was a really, really good note. It was something that Kelly and I took to heart as we did sort of our final planning for how to do the film. And some of that, so, you know, there was a fair amount of dialogue that got cut out of the film. And basically, for any emotional moment or any any substantive moment, we would do a take at least one take where we didn't say the lines, and it was just just communicated all with looks. And that a, a tremendous amount of that made it into the film. If there wasn't something that had to be said out loud, uh, it, you know, it, and it gave all of the actors so much room for just 
you know, in subtle emotive performance that I, especially when you see it on a big screen, I tend to find is much more affecting. Mm. Uh, and, you know, there were a couple of scenes, there was one in particular between Barry and Toby where we just couldn't find, we, we couldn't make it work right. We couldn't get the emotion right with the lines. And so, you know, we sort of sent everybody out of the room and it was just the three of us and, and, and Kelly sitting there working through how to do it. And it was just here, it boiled down to here's what the emotion is, just throw that emotion at each other, just stare each other down with that intention. And that's what's in the film. And it works so much better than it did in any of the earlier takes where they were trying to use uh, words for it. There, there is this, one of the last shots of the film is, is a, off of Barry's face. And for me, it gives Patrick everything he's been looking for. And it is just a look. It's just a look from Barry. And that that to me is like, you know, I couldn't write that. That's that's the brilliance of hiring and casting amazing talent to to, to bring your words to life, you know? And, and that that moment to me just it just it makes the movie and like it's it's that beat, it's that button of closure that you need for Patrick to know that things are gonna work out. And and it's 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 there's not a there's not a word behind it. It's just a look. So I if you haven't seen the film yet, ah, oh, just be prepared to have your your heart wrecked. <laughs> like, I mean, seriously, after seeing it at Man's Chinese Theater, I I can't wait to see it again. Uh, and also, I, I mean, for me, is when we screened in L.A., there were like 480 people in this theater because we had 30 wheelchairs that allowed 30 act, you know, filmmakers to be there. And everybody cried at the right spot. They laughed at the right spot. And that's what you want to see because we go to a, we, we watch films so we feel something. We want to feel something, whether it's happy, sad, or whatever. And uh, that was the most uh, realization to me that, you know what, this might be a little bit more than just some little bitty indie film that's never going to go anywhere. Right. I think also to to sort of just piggyback off of what these guys were saying, um, you know, there you let the audience do a little bit more of the work in that way, right? They they're able to sort of fill in some of the narrative without having so much, and and there's really some silent emotional moments, and um, like you can't not look into Barry's eyes and and see like the depth right and the experience and all of that and then we had victoria who is just this little actor oh. who she knew every line she was ready for she goes straight from playing to a, a full-on emotional moment and just you did didn't have to even do it twice she's just such a great young little girl that you know brought it brought it and it was really great to see that. And it was cool to see the two of them together too. You've got, you know, this level of experience and this level of innocence and inexperience. And as long as, you know, you're bringing authentic emotion and, and your eyes are connecting with the other person, I think the, the camera will, will do its job. Well, and, and, and Toby, how you connected to Abigail. I mean, the two of you had this amazing chemistry. Well, she was fun. She's the only little girl I'll let drive my wheelchair. <laughs> not, she, he said she, not, not Victoria, Abigail, Abigail, not Victoria. Oh, oh. <laughs> Victoria too, but I was talking Victoria about. Victoria too then. Uh, I mean, Abby not a Abigail, a a, no, uh, <laughs> a, a, Abby is like insane. That was another moment where you're like, oh my gosh, I. it's what a great opportunity to have this moment with this person. And She's someone who is so fun and authentic and just a joy to be around, like in real life. Mm. So being able to do a scene with her and really connect with her um, and she's way more experienced. So, you know, I just go, all right, I, I'm trusting you on this one and I'm going to just see where this goes. And um, and she's fantastic. So what a great experience. Well, I, I wanted to uh, I wanted to ask, then this question is for everyone. Um, and I usually ask this, this comes from Corey Allen, who I used to study with. And it's so connecting to what this film is about as well. Uh, getting it out there with diversity and uh, with the disability community and bringing everybody together. So the question is, what do you want the most 
at this moment in your life? Alexander? You, do, you have, is, is this a is this a professional question? Is this a personal question? This is a anything that comes to you. It could be prefer, uh, professional, personal, whatever it means to you. I mean, obviously, our focus is <laughs> we have a we have a very laser sharp focus on what's directly in front of us, which is which is slam dance. But uh, you know, especially in the context of the film, we really want to get it out there, and it's there's. Uh, there's so, there's nothing else like this out there. I've never seen another movie like this one, and uh, there's there's a lot of noise to cut through, and, and there's a lot of marketing, and that's uh, you know there are studios and uh, you know streamers that put massive ad campaigns behind a lot of content, and some of that's good, and some of it's not. A lot of it's not, uh, and you know we really are are trying to find the best path to get this film in front of as many people as possible because it is unique and it is different. And, you know, I've worked on so many projects in my career that were just pure escapism. You know, it's entertainment, it's stuff that you can have on in the background. And that's great and it serves a function, but, uh, you know, every once in a while, you really wanna do something that speaks to how you hope the world can be. You wanna to contribute to the conversation in a meaningful way. And that really is what this film is for me. If I were never known for anything else in my life, I'd be proud to be known for this. And allowing the as many people as possible to have access to that and, and maybe change a few minds and maybe you know tell people that making films like this is worthwhile and profitable uh, so that there's more good, good, positive, real, representative, authentic, uh, work out in the world that also maybe can entertain some folks along the way that's what i want and world peace <laughs> i just i just uh i don't want trump to win i want him in jail within the next six months <laughs> that's my whole wish for the year well you know i've been an advocate for people with disabilities in front of and behind the camera for 36 years. And David, you know, I've, we've known each other for a long time. And <clears throat> I've always wished for a vehicle that would put the message out wide. And uh, little did I know that this would end up being the vehicle, a film about found family that became behind the scenes found family. And, um, I, I think it really has a chance to make an impact. And, you know, as um, as Alex said, we're really laser focused on slam dance <clears throat> and meetings and hopefully some influential people in some of these studios and streamers and things that will see this and see the same product that we've worked so hard to make. So, and see the impact that it can have. We've we've tried really hard to invite, you know, people from the streamers and networks to come. And, you know, we've dangled that out there for them, whether or not they come, they'll probably show up and not even tell us that they're there um, because they don't, you know, they want to make that determination on their own. But I will tell you, you know, when we did our screening in Los Angeles and that was our premiere and we we did that in our own backyard, as John said, we had almost 500 people there and I have never experienced anything like that in my entire life. And I don't know if I ever will again, but it's a moment that I want to bottle forever because we got a standing ovation at the end of the screening. And Alex and I were mobbed basically, like just with people wanting to talk to us and talk about the film and share their experiences. And I think that, you know, if, if the right, you know, distributor or platform or somebody, you know, who, who was in a position to take this film to the next level will be at our Park City screening, they're going to experience that again as well. And then they will really see the absolute value of this film. I so mean, one other thing before, I know we're about to run out of time that we must say too, is that Toby and I have known Peter Fairley for years. Mm. We invited Peter to come see the film, you know, yes. come see what we did. And he loved it so much. Now we're talking about a double Oscar winner, a double global, uh, Golden Globe winner with lots of films that have been very successful. He says, I like this film so much, I would put my name on it to help you get it out there. And so that to me says a lot that a man with the history and that he has 
has thought that about the film as well. And he saw it with everybody else in LA for the he has, he has responded to every media request in regards to it. I mean, Peter is really just truly a believer in this project. And I can't I can't thank him enough. And I don't know if you saw the recent Los Angeles magazine article. I about fell out of my chair when I read that. I could not believe it. that. <laughs> I I could not believe it. I mean, a tiny indie film like this does not get that kind of coverage. Do you know what I mean? We don't like it, it's a special film and every single one of the people that has been involved with it has made it that special. Well, so I think Kelly did something amazing w that created an opportunity for all of us. And, you know, you say, what would you wish for? I mean, it's a multi-part thing. I would love to be able to turn on my TV soon and and be able to watch a scene with Barry Bostwick and myself uh, or John and myself and have it be on, on the front list of movies recommended to me. Because if a movie that I'm in is recommended to me on, on my uh, Prime or Apple TV or whatever, like I'm the perfect audience for that. Um, but I think furthermore, besides the disability agenda and all of those things is one of the reasons why movies are important is they generate conversations and they'll generate conversations about inclusion and disability, but more importantly, this will generate conversations between fathers and daughters. And I think that the that the heart of this story, you can take all of the uh, inclusion and uh, diversity and, and set it aside and go, this is a story about uh, being a good father and being a good um, person to someone that really needs you and being there for that person. And, and and being honest with yourself and your own demons. And I think that because all of that is in this story, conversations will be had that will heal years of relationships, you know, that have been torn apart. And I think that's the beauty of film and stories and creating. And, and one of the reasons and the benefits that we all get outside of some great Barry Bostwick ceramics <laughs> um, oh. is that knowledge that somewhere, the more people that watch this, the more opportunities for relationships to be healed through conversation. Well, that's great. Beautifully said. Well, that was pretty deep, Toby. Well, I don't think I don't think anyone can show that up. So. I love it. I just want to I want to thank you all for being here. We had a, a wonderful audience here too. I know we had two questions here, but we're running right out of time. Um, but I, I just wish you the continued success with this beautiful piece of art, um, and that is going to change, change lives and perspectives. So thank you all for that. Thank you, thank for, you for allowing us to meet the bids. Yeah. I, I, I love you all. Thank you. Uh, thank you all so much and have fun. Have fun at Slam Dance. Well, you know, it's going to be a high of 28 degrees and a low of two. So, uh, yeah. <laughs>
Did you did you did you uh, miss the things that I stole from your house? Oh, uh, I ha I haven't seen them yet, but yeah, uh, uh, yeah, because I've got them. You <laughs> selling them on eBay. Yeah. I, I noticed the silverware was gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's right. so sweet. You guys are so sweet and and so talented. And thank you for all the attaboys that you gave me. I deserve nothing. I give it all back to you. Thank You're you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank bye bye you. everybody. All right, guys. Bye, Alex. Bye, Kevin. Thank you, everyone. Bye. -bye.